We are continuing Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Status Quo, Chapter 15, Description of the Kingdom of God. We are discussing how, well, how the Kumaras who are approaching. Lens plus is not there, she's waiting there. The Kumaras are going into the spiritual world because they want to see the Supreme Personality of God. So, in going there, they are seeing many things. This is a description of by uh, Brahma. Okay. Loading. <laughs> All right. Um, you want to chant? Tasmin Natipya Munayasa, the Sajamana. Taksha Samana Yav. Vayasava Atha Sapta Maya Taksha Samana Sapta Maya Deva Vachakshata Grihita Gado Paradhya Deva Vachakshata Grihita Gado Paradhya Kayur Kundala Kiri Vatanka Vesho Kayur Kundala Kiri Vatanka Vesho After passing through the six entrances of Vaikuntha Puri, after passing through the six entrances of Vaikuntha Puri, the Lord's residence, Without feeling astonishment at all, the decorations they saw at the seventh gate, two shining beings of the same age, armed with maces and adorned with most valuable jewelry, earrings, diamonds, helmets, garments, etc. To proper this uh, the nice understanding of what they saw. The sages were so eager to see the Lord within Vaikuntha Puri that they did not care to see the transcendental decorations of the six gates, which they passed by one after another. But at the seventh door, they found two doormen of the same age. The significance of the doormen's being of the same age is that in the Vaikuntha planets, there is no old age. So one cannot distinguish who is older than whom. The inhabitants of Vaikuntha are decorated like the Supreme Personality of Godhead Narayana with Shankar, Chakra, Vada and Patma. No <laughs> dog.
No, for so long, one hour they go to bed. It's like it's always like that. It <laughs> always like that. <laughs> it always happens. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> you wanted to say something. No, go ahead. <laughs> uh, the people, there is no age. Yeah. It does. People, are, there is no old age. But still, people can be different ages, right? Prabhu, just yeah. for the past time. Yeah. But in Vaikuntha, they all generally they all look like the Narayan. Mm-hmm. The ladies look like Lakshmi. Yeah. Yeah. So. They will be of what? Like 60 years or? Yeah. Yeah. But, but for the sake of past time, they can be older than... Uh, possible, in, but I, I think in Vaikuntha, the main thing is uh, worship of the Lord. Yeah. yeah. They get together and worship. Uh, yeah, it's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible. Yeah. Generally, in the description you see, it's, you don't see... Uh, general description. Yeah. Yes. In Vaikuntha, no old people. <laughs> but in, uh, in uh, Ayodhya onwards... You see different ages. Yeah. Yeah. We understand. Oh, okay. So, Vakunda is not really. From Ayodhya onwards, there are more difference of. Yeah, uh, that's what I know. Rasas and so on are more pronounced. Yeah. Rashi is only one reverence. And uh, the liberation also, Sarupya, Salokya, Shashti, and all those things are manifested in the Vaikunta planets. So same forms like that. But I, I'm sure if the Lord wanted, yeah. If you read in the <coughs> Vriyad Bhagavata Mantra, right? When Gopakuma wanted to think of Krishna, so Narayana himself changed his form to Krishna form and they all like how they are men and like that. So yeah, it's possible you know, to manifest this thing. So. So in Vaikuntha, if everybody is of the same age, then there is no growth really from childhood. Everybody comes and stays there. It's yeah. fully grown. Age. Yeah, anyway, even in uh, Goloka, there is no growing. It's eternal. <laughs> it's eternal. <laughs> it's eternal. <laughs> but for the sake of past time. Yeah. But even then, they don't. The past time only, you can see Krishna's past time only in Goloka is, is like what he does in the Bhoman. Yeah? Up to when he leaves with Akrura, right? So after that, the pastime starts again. Yeah. So the childhood pastimes happen at the same time as like Rasa and other pastimes? It is possible. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible, right? Yeah, at it's different right. times, different, yeah, or different places. It's possible. Let me just read to you all. And I remember Prabhu was asking about. Narada Muni going to Dwaraka and seeing the Lord, right? So what happens is Narada sees the Lord everywhere. Everywhere he goes, he sees the Lord. So then he kind of like uh, could not understand the whole thing. And then at one point, uh, he saw Krishna worshipping demigods. Another point doing some religious activity. Another place is going on a hunting trip. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. So you're seeing so many different things and then they all different times also. In different areas of uh, palaces and so on, right? Different palaces. So he's like astonished. So then another place he went, he saw Krishna disguised going from different homes or ministers to see whether uh, what they are thinking and so on. So another story he started laughing. <laughs> he thought this is so funny. Then he kept quiet because he didn't want to feel offensive to the Lord. And then uh, he then he, he approached the Lord and he said, you know, really can't understand your mystic potencies and all. But he, he prayed that he, the Lord will give him some blessings. You know? uh, so then the Lord realized that Narada felt that he must have committed an offense. So he said, um, O Brahmana, I am the speaker of religion. It's performance sanction. I observe religious principles to teach them to the world. My child, so do not be disturbed. Then Shukadeva Goswami said, Thus in every palace, Narada saw the Lord in his same personal form, executing the transcendent principles of religion that purify those engaged in household affairs. In the purport, 
this is quoted from Vishnu Chakravarti. As stated in text 2 of this chapter, all the Lord's activities in the many palaces were performed by the Lord's single spiritual form, Ekena Vapusha, which manifested in many places at once. Same time. This vision was revealed to Narada because of his desire to see it and the Lord's desire to show it to him. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti points out that the other residents of Dwaraka could see Krishna only in the particular part of the city they themselves occupy. And not anywhere else, even if they would sometimes go to another precinct on some business. <laughs> Thus the Lord gave a special view of his pastimes to his beloved devotee Narada. What was it called? Devotees can put the Dwarka could see in the, only in their region. Their but, region. Even if they go for business to another place, they cannot see. There they cannot see. Yeah, they can only see Krishna in their. So they only see Krishna as their Lord. Krishna. Right, so so it looks like Dwarka is divided into sectors. Yeah. So different <coughs> Dwarka people will be in different sectors. Is that different right? palaces and different region. Sixteen thousand one hundred and eight palaces. Like but that, that is his eternal bias. Yes, all everything. Point is, the Lord can do simultaneously different activities, mm-hmm. and within each location is different time also. Different time also. Yeah. Time of the day. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere he's doing a yagna in the morning. Somewhere he's going on a hunting trip. <laughs> so it's just yeah, it's possible. What you're asking, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even in Vaikuntha, if he wants, he could do that. That's when Narada goes to each palace and Krishna will invite him again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my understanding of that, that, uh, sorry, of that in, the, in his, just like in one sense, Krishna is present in every house here in the deity form, in the Vaikuntha or in Goloka, Krishna will be present personally with yes. everybody at the same time. Yes. That's why it's personal. Yeah, but they all can they can only see Krishna yeah. for themselves and yeah. they cannot see Krishna with someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like in the Rasa yes. Leela also. It's they not like they be. yeah, they will they'll only see one Krishna. Yes. And which is personal to them. But then they think about other also and Krishna also wants the opportunity. See, of course, there's the more is they think. If they think otherwise then Krishna disappears. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next one. <coughs> Vatram Bhuva Kuti Naya Kuta Nirgama Bhya Vatram Bhuva Kuti Naya Kuta Nirgama Bhya Rakte Kshane Na Chamana Grabha Sandadhano Rakte Kshane The two doormen were garlanded with fresh flowers which attracted intoxicated bees and which were placed around their necks and between their four blue arms. From their arched eyebrows, discontented nostrils and reddish eyes, they appeared somewhat agitated. So, so in, 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 in that description already you can see that something not correct. <laughs> Because it's Vaikuntha plan. Yeah. yeah. Text 29. Can I ask a quick question about the 28th one? If the inhabitants of Vaikuntha are decorated like the Supreme Personality of God with Shankar Chakra, Gada, and Pag, everybody is holding. Them. Yes. Oh, always. That I didn't know. I thought they were they had the same form, but they had these. Yeah. <laughs> but then they engage in the worship of the Lord, so they would be. And they put it down and do something. <laughs> do something. Yeah. <laughs> chakra Prabhupada said, I didn't see. Shankha, Chakra, Gada, Padma. Yeah. All yeah, the Chakra they may have, but may not be the it's same. Yeah, not Sudarshan. But here it says, like, has a bluish color of four hands like Maharaj. So that means uh, they carry all four. That's what he's asking, and I said yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-h
ते विषिमया मुनया स्वदृष्ट्या ये संचरन्ति अविविहता विगता विभाशंखा the great sages headed by sanaka had opened doors everywhere they had no idea of ours and theirs with open minds they entered the seventh door out of their own will just as they had passed through the other the six other doors which were made of gold and diamonds in the purport prabhat explains the great sages name is sanaka sanaka sanatana sanandana and sanat kumara although very old in years remember they were created quite a long time ago maintain themselves eternally as small children they were not at all duplicious and they entered the doors exactly as little children enter places without any idea of what it is to trespass so they very innocent that is a child's nature a child can enter any place and no one checks him indeed a child is generally welcome in his attempts to go places but if it so happens that a child is checked from entering a door he naturally becomes very sorry and angry that is the nature of a child in this case the same thing happened the child like saintly personalities entered all the six doors of the palace and no one checked them therefore when they attempted to enter the seventh door and were forbidden by the doormen who checked them with their sticks they naturally became very angry and sorrowful an ordinary child would cry but because these were not ordinary children they immediately made preparations to punish the doormen for the doormen had committed a great offense even to this day a saintly person is never checked from entering anyone's door in india i don't know now yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's not true. during prabhat's time yes. maybe in the last 40 years <laughs> it's changed now Okay, so you know why the part of the prabha is giving a, why the uh, they are not happy also, and the, the doorman has stopped them for for reasons they don't even understand. Text thirty. Tanvikshya vata rashanam chatura kumara. Tanvikshya vata rashanam chatura kumara. Vidhan dasar dvayaso viditatma tatma. Vidhan dasar dvayaso viditatma tatma. तेजो विहस्य भगवतीय even though they were the oldest of all living creatures and had realized the truth of the self but when the porters who happened to possess <coughs> a disposition quite unpalatable to the lord saw the sages they blocked their way with their stares despising their glories although the sages did not deserve such treatment at their hands so the whole thing was odd okay, because they are coming to vaikuntha and nobody can just come to vaikuntha unless you are qualified <laughs> so that's 
something is wrong. So that's the description is going on. Text 31. Yeah. Apparently, is talking about the Kumaras living in Pataloka. Yeah. <coughs> they have access to Aikota, but they reside. In They're Pataloka. totally liberated. Yeah. Almost pure. <laughs> they are on a different level. <laughs> They are, they are pure devotees, but they are the Brahman their lives. <coughs> they have material body. Huh? They have material body because they are. Of no, their no. Blood. Their okay. bodies are not material. Not, not like ours. Not grass, definitely, but subtle, <laughs> subtle material. Body. Yeah, subtle, you can say. But they, you will see, they are empowered personalities. Jnana Shakti of the Lord. They cannot enter into a certain masculine. Yeah, it's not. They, cannot come to they are actually body. transcendental. Let's continue. Tabhyam me satsva anime shishunishidya mana. Tabhyam me satsva anime shishunishidya mana. Swarhata swarhata mahipi hare piti hara pabhyam. Swarhata mahipi hare Uchu suhitma didrikshita bhanga isha. Uchu suhitma didrikshita bhanga isha. Kamanu jena sahasata upap lutakshaha. Kamanu jena sahasata upap lutakshaha. When the Kumaras, although by far the fittest persons, were thus forbidden entrance, by the two chief doorkeepers of Sri Hari, while other divinities looked on, their eyes suddenly turned red because of anger due to their great eagerness to see their most beloved master, Sri Hari, the personality of God. Now, regardless of whether they have spiritual body or not, they can still go up to Vaikuntha to see, just like Durvasa Muni also went okay. to Vaikuntha. So don't try to overthink all these things. <laughs> okay, so try to see that it is possible they can go, but they cannot stay there. So transparency, those are transparent things. Yes, right. They can go to Vaikuntha also. No, well, I'm saying yogis can go also, yeah, they but can they go cannot stay there unless they are qualified. Which means they have to give up their material body to take up a spiritual body. Okay. All right, so in the purport, in the second paragraph, Prabhupada explains <coughs> what uh, anger is. So he says the younger brother of desire is anger. If you have desire and it doesn't get fulfilled, you will get angry. Right? Kama is a? Kama is a? However, these people are not in Rajo. Anyway, it doesn't matter whether they are or not. This is something is happening, and Prabhupada is explaining how anger will come. They had a desire to see the Lord, and when they were refused, they got angry. Now, their anger is still not the same as our anger. Their desire to see the Lord is superior to our desire to manipulate the material nature. Like Hanuman's anger. Yeah, so it's a, it's a different kind of desire. Anyway, don't try to overthink all this thing. Just understand that, you know, this is at, at a different level also. Uh, so anyway, Prabhupada says, uh, anger comes if desire, which is a fact. So it, it also can happen in the case of even the elevated personalities also. It's not like they don't have anger. The difference is they con they, they've conquered anger and they can control anger. That's the difference, yeah? So Prabhupada then continues, here we can mark that even great saintly persons like the Kumaras were also angry, but they were not angry for their personal interests. Mm -hmm. They were angry because they were forbidden to enter the palace to see the personality of God. So that is good anger. <laughs> Therefore, the theory that in the perfectional stage one should not have anger is not supported in this verse. Okay. Anger will continue even in the liberated stage. These four mendicant brothers, even even Radharani gets angry with them. So don't overthink too much. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
these four mendicant brothers, the Kumaras, were considered liberated persons, but still they were angry because they were restricted in their service to the Lord. This is another reason. So sometimes your service is taken, you can get angry for the service, not for your sense of enjoyment. <laughs> the difference between the anger of an ordinary person and that of a liberated person is that an ordinary person becomes angry because his sense desires are not being fulfilled. <laughs> Whereas a liberated person like the Kumaras becomes angry when restricted in the discharge of duties for serving the Supreme Personality of God. So sometimes we are told that service will change. <coughs> so you may have service one and then tomorrow that can be given to somebody else. You get something else. So it should not... No, as long as, as the authority it. is guiding you, that's okay. It's, in yeah. this case, let's say some, you're going to do a puja and somebody stops you. Then what? You're going to be enjoying? <laughs> You'll get angry, right? I have to go and do my service. But in our case, it's different also. If you're your service one and you're not rendering properly, the operator might like to do it from a third you you can do better. <laughs> That's a different, yeah. That's a following authority. Yeah. Because I was thinking, like saying, Janmashri, sometimes we are made the gatekeepers. Right. <laughs> That's different. Yeah. Then, uh, that is crowd control. Yeah. Yeah. So, we have certain, like, you know, some certain <laughs> rules that we made. Yeah. And then sometimes devotees come and then... You try to break the rules. Yeah, then what to do? Huh? You have to see if you can control them, then do it. If you can't, then what can you do? Right? <laughs> it's pointless fighting. Yeah. You have to be intelligent also. What what can you achieve there? You can tell them, look, this is my service. I'm supposed to restrict. So what do you want me to do? Yeah. Do you want me to break this thing and then I have to answer? Or you want to just peacefully go? Yeah, because there is one thing there are so many things that have to be Yeah. <coughs> It is hard, I know, but <coughs> you can always ask them what they think. And sometimes you have no control over them, right? They may be senior to you and then they will say, ah, don't worry, I'm going. <laughs> so what can you do? <laughs> it has happened. Right? So sometimes it's pointless fighting for this kind of thing. It's not worth it. Right? <laughs> and then in the next paragraph, Prabhupada continues to explain. Although the Kumaras were already liberated persons, they nevertheless became angry. This point is very important. Becoming liberated does not necessitate losing one's sensual activities. Sense activities continue even in the liberated stage. The difference is, however, that sense activities in liberation are accepted only in connection with Krishna consciousness, whereas sense activities in conditioned stage are enacted for personal sense. Clear, right? Yeah. So that's what <coughs> Prabhupada wants to say. Because otherwise, we may make our own conclusions. Like, even before I read, all of you asking, why they get angry, blah, blah. <laughs> but we can understand there's a difference. Uh, the point Shila Prabhupada is making in the last paragraph is, our emotions are always there. Even in spiritual world. The emotions must be there. Otherwise, where is the rasa? If you are like robots, then there's no rasa. So we must have emotions. <laughs> okay, emotions are important. Text thirty two. Munaya uchu munaya ko vami hai kya bhagavat paricharya yoche tad dharmi naam nivasatam vishama swabhava Tasmin Prashanta Purushe Gata Vigraheva Tasmin Prashanta Purushe Gata Vigraheva Kovata Matruha Kaho Parishanta Niyaha Kovata Matruha Kaho Parishanta Niyaha The sages say, these sages are the ones who are asking Brahma, right? why everything is getting dark and so on. So the story is... Sages say, 
who are these two persons who have developed such a discordant these sages are the four kumaras who are these two persons who have developed such a discordant mentality even though they are posted in the service of the lord in the highest position and are expected to have developed the same qualities as the lord so they are like confused how is it that they are showing this kind of quality how are these two persons living in vaikuntha where is the possibility of an enemy is coming into this kingdom of god the supreme personality of god he has no enemy who could be envious of him probably these two persons are impostors therefore they suspect others to be like themselves <laughs> <laughs> so now you understand why the sages got angry uh, and the, the whole thing is the 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 two gods shouldn't have acted like that but for some reason which we'll find out later on why it happened so kumaras so, right yes this is kumaras kumara. kumara. yeah when I, i i was thinking of the other thing sages then i realized it's still there. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah. oh one thing before i forget the other day some devotees were asking about the the movement of the sun so then uh, i was i was saying because from what i read that the sun doesn't go to the lower planet of the system so i went to check up the sun does go to yama loka also <laughs> So he does go to his region. Goes to four region: Indra, goes to Yamaloka, Varuna, and another area also. So he goes to four regions within the material. Now as to whether the hellish planets get sunlight or not, I do not know. I couldn't find out. But sometimes you read they are in very dark place or whatever. So I, maybe they don't. But at least Pitri Loka will get sun. All right. Okay, yeah. In the purport, when uh, the Prabhupada says, when the people are uh, qualified, so he says, it has been analyzed by great personalities that when a conditioned soul is liberated and becomes a devotee, about 79% of all the good qualities of the Lord develop in his person. Okay. But not, not in the capacity of the no. Lord. good qualities will happen by only 79 no? you cannot create well you cannot play the flute and things like that <laughs> so there are certain things you won't develop but 79% of the qualities will develop so when you have all these qualities prabhupada was saying there's no question of uh, being envious of the lord or becoming his enmity also in the material world, yes So then Prabhupada says, one is not allowed to enter Vaikuntha unless he has completely developed the good qualities. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's so the thing. Have that. So we don't have it. So we, have, we are now training to become like that. Yeah? Uh, and the best way to develop is to take a humble position. So even when somebody wants to come into, past the gate you are, you just tolerate, you know. no point fighting and making a big deal but if they come and more people come then the then then you you can you have to step up and say and that's what you because there's a mass crowd over there yeah so you have to say no he is yeah. devotee is allowed to manage. manage we have a volunteer batch yeah. so people understand that these are volunteers so we are letting them so in. that's one thing the other thing is you can already put up the sign there saying those with the batch can come others have to wait or something oh, okay. so then they will know even those people do know when they will see it. or mm-hmm. or even before the the, the function the <coughs> email must be sent to all the devotees to say if you don't have then you will not be allowed in please don't uh, be 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 violent or something like <coughs> so at least the message they know and everyone knows you send it to everybody so people of course when sanyasis come and then they don't advise them it's a different matter <laughs> senior devotees come it's a different matter but at least you under most people should know and respect your service man. right if you respect someone's service they will respect your service like you know 
Yeah. Just again, another way of when you said best way to develop the qualities is take a humble position. Yeah. We hear from Haridas, so we say, when in doubt, do the right thing. Mm. When in doubt, do the right thing. And the right thing is take a humble take position. Take a humble position, yes. So there are the doubts and the ha, should I wait to send this to the right Surrender to the situation. <laughs> Take the lower position. Yeah. Nothing wrong. And I find it helps a lot. Diffuses the situation quickly. So then Prabhupada says, uh, the basic principle of goodness is to accept subordination. That means you are becoming humble to the Supreme Personality of God or anyone who represents the Supreme Personality in authority. The sages therefore were surprised to see that the two doormen who checked them from entering the palace were not exactly like the residents of Vaikuntha Loka. It may be said that a doorman's duty is to determine who should be allowed to enter the palace and who should not. But that is not relevant in this matter because no one is allowed to enter the Vaikuntha planets unless he has developed 100% his mentality of devotional service to the Supreme Lord. No enemy of the Lord can enter Vaikuntha Lord. The Kumaras concluded that the only reason for the Dharmans checking them was that the Dharmans themselves were imposters. <laughs> because the Kumaras want to do service to the Lord. The Kumaras are Brahmavadis? Yes, but they want to do service. At this point, they are yes. Yeah, But they came to do service. <laughs> it's interesting. Nobody can enter Vaikuntha Lord. They are not pure. Yeah. Then why in the government? Yeah, same question. I had. They wanted to do that service. 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 Otherwise, but even sometimes you'll find some characters, uh, the the yogis and all can come. They are allowed to come to up to the gates only. Yeah, they can only. Yeah, they can't open. The Upa, I think clarified no. later in the first one. <laughs> they, they can come to the gates only. Yeah. Some. Correct. Yeah. The yeah, people the, who can come to the gate only, not in the... Yeah, like the pearly gates, you know, they have, right? You come in and then they'll check. Okay, show your pass. <laughs> Next 33. Yeah, it is interesting, but yeah, they, there are cases. People may come. The Lord may allow someone to come up to the gates to see what you're missing. You know, then. <laughs> so we are saying that they were Brahmavadis, but they still came for service. Yeah, so they, they Brahmavadis means they would not be engaging in service. Is that... No, they will they will glorify the Brahman, no? Mm -hmm. And that's the service. And they came to see the Lord. They've heard about him from Lord Brahma. All the time Brahma glorifies Narayan and Krishna. So they are they they came to see. So seeing the Lord when you come to the temple to see, it's a service. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how what kind of service. Everyone thinks service only must be physically. Even taking darshan is a service. Yeah. Taking prasad is a service. Yeah. Yeah. So the pastime of they actually uh, smelling the lotus. Don't, 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 yeah, don't, don't jump. Yeah, you will jump before. It's been, wait, don't, just jump, it's coming. Coming. don't jump it's the gun. We are coming. Text 33. Nahe antaram bhagavar. Bhagavati Hasamasta Kuksha. Atmana Matmani Nabona Visheva Dhiraha. Pashyan Triyatra Yubaho Sura Lingi no Kim. Vyutpaditam Hyudara Bhavi Bhayam Yatyosya. Vyutpaditam Bhayam Yatyosya. In the Vaikuntha world, there is complete harmony between the residents and the Supreme Personality of God, just as there is complete harmony within space between the big and the small skies. Why then is there a seed of fear in this field of harmony? These two persons are dressed like inhabitants of Vaikuntha, but where from can their disharmony come into existence? These are valid questions they ask me. In the, Prabhupada, in the second paragraph, Prabhupada writes, in the Vaikuntha world, there is no disharmony between the Lord and the residents. Therefore, God's creation in the Vaikuntha world is perfect. There is no cause of fear. The entire kingdom of God is such a completely harmonious unit 
that there is no possibility of enmity. Everything there is absolute. Just as there are many physiological constructions within the body, yet they work in one order for the satisfaction of the stomach. And just as in a machine there are hundreds and thousands of parts, yet they run in harmony to fulfill the function of the machine. In the Vaikuntha planets, the Lord is perfect and the inhabitants also perfectly engage in the service of the Lord. <coughs> and then in the paragraph after that, <coughs> Baba talks about the Mayavadis also. So, I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to go to the paragraph after that. In the middle of the next paragraph, paragraph after. But foolish creatures, although actually under the control of the supreme living entity, defy his existence. And that state is called Maya. Sometimes they deny that there is such a being as God. They say everything is void. And sometimes they deny him in a different way. There may be a God, but he has no form. Both these conceptions arise from the rebellious condition of the living entity. As long as this rebellious condition prevails, the material world will continue in disharmony. And then Prabhupada in the next paragraph continues. Harmony or disharmony is realized because of the law and order of a particular place. Religion is the law and order of the Supreme Law. Amazing. How <laughs> he connects, right? So <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that means we have to follow some rules and regulations. Otherwise, we are always rebelling against Krishna. That's what it is. So a couple of lines later, Prabhupada says, Krishna therefore says, just give up all religious principles. In the spiritual world, this religious principle of Krishna consciousness is maintained in harmony and therefore that world is called Vaikuntha. Now here is something saying. If the same principle can be adopted here wholly or partially, then it is also Vaikuntha. So basically Prabhupada is saying is if we all work together in harmony, then we are in Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha. <laughs> If the members of the International Society of Krishna Consciousness putting faith in Krishna as the center live in harmony according to the order and principles of Bhagavad Gita, then they are living in Vaikuntha, not in this material. Very clear. <laughs> so we cannot pretend we are not in Vaikuntha also. Because Vaikuntha means working with Krishna as the center. That's all. It's not a question of we have to go there. No, you can create a Vaikuntha environment here when everyone works together. Not And like you said, uh, you were saying also that one has to accept the position. Take the humble position. You may have a strong opinion, but if people are, uh, are, are not willing to listen, then take a humble position. You're not going to lose that. You're not going to grow a couple of inches short or something. Right? It's true, you can check yourself and after let's see. <laughs> By taking a humble position, if you lost some weight or... <laughs> and sometimes you think even the service might get affected, but then, you know, what is higher principle? Yeah. Then? Is harmony might be a higher principle than the immediate result of the service. Krishna will be more pleased with you if, if all of you are, ha are doing service together, then only one person doing everything to show that I can do it. He's not just in, he's seeing how everyone is cooperating to please him. Not just one person trying to please him. <coughs> because he wants all of us to go back. No, just one person. Text 34. Tadvama mosya paramasya vikuntha bhartu hu. Tadvama mosya vikuntha bhartu hu. Kartum prakrishtam ehadhima himanda divya. Kartum prakrishtam ehadhima himanda divya. Loka nito vrajatam 
प्रजतम मंत्र भाव दृष्टिया पापी यशस्त्रय Therefore, let us consider how these two contaminated persons should be punished. Now they want to take action. <laughs> the punishment should be apt, for thus benefit can eventually be bestowed upon them. So also they just don't want to punish them. They want to make sure it helps that person. That's pretty. Huh? Man, that's nice. Yeah, I mean they 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 still feeling the the compassion. No, they want to help the other person. Since they find duality in the existence of Vaikuntha life, they are contaminated and should be removed from this place to the material world, where the living entities have three kinds of enemies: lust, anger, greed, or desire. So in the purport, towards the end, Prabhupada says, since the basic principles of criminality are sense gratification, anger and unnecessary lust, persons conducted by these three enemies of the living entity are never promoted to Vaikuntha Loka. So you, you have to also check yourself. Do I always have sense gratification? Am I always going for that? Uh, am I getting angry unnecessarily? Am I lusting after things that I don't need, you know? Uh, so if you feel that you still have that, then you are not ready for going back to God. <laughs> so, uh, so the people, Kumaras, they are from middle world. The doormen are Vaikun to also. Until also, they must be much higher than doormen. Uh, uh, so, uh, oh, see, you, you, are, you, are, you are thinking too much here. <laughs> because remember, the Kumaras are also Avesha. You know what Avesha is? What? Avesha. Yeah, they are avatars also. Yeah. So whether or not they can curse or not, it's, it's regardless. The point is, there's something that is wrong going on. <laughs> the whole thing is a pastor. Right? Maybe Generally in the Vaikuntha planet, nobody is cursing anyway. But this pastime is happening. And the, the, the gods were not supposed to do something like that, but they did that. So why don't you ask, why did the gods do that? Right? The gods themselves were wrong to start off with. <laughs> no, they, it is wrong. The whole thing is because the Kumaras are qualified to come there. So there is something wrong going on. So the, we have to have an open mind to understand why this is happening more than not like how this guy can curse and that guy. That way nobody can understand sometimes who can curse and who cannot curse. Yeah. <laughs> Even uh, uh, the, when uh, Maharaj Parishi put the snake around uh, that uh, tree, Shamukha Rishi, right? And then Shring, uh, his son curse. He's only a small boy. Now can, can Maharaj Rishi counter the curse? Yeah. yeah. So why yeah. didn't you ask that question? What Rajshringi has to curse, right? But it happens. It happens for a reason. The same way, uh, even though someone may be higher or lower, a curse can be uh, still manifested. Yeah. So we shouldn't think uh, someone who's young cannot curse you. They can still curse you. For example, you may be old, but your daughter may be young, but she's innocent and she has more affection for Krishna. One day she gets angry with you and she curses you. It's going to happen, right? <laughs> she can curse you and then it can take uh, effect. She's laughing. She's already doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just giving you an example. It is possible. So we cannot say someone is young uh, uh, or like you were saying, ontological position. Then she, no, but you have to see the situation also. Who these personalities are. Yeah, they are pure devotees of Krishna also. So you went to the uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so when devotees so we don't want devotees to curse one another because it will Krishna Krishna is is kind. So whenever somebody says something 
he may want to fulfill their desire also. So you have to be careful what you say or curse. So it may happen. So if you curse someone for the benefit, then it's okay. But if you are cursing because you are angry, then you you are. Huh? It is an offense. That's why I'm saying you, you have to be very careful. <laughs> you shouldn't do it to Vaishnavas. <laughs> So, we should yeah, not do what we might say. Yeah, Prabhu was saying about this devotee cursed uh, him. And then I was saying, yeah, devotees curse sometimes because they are getting angry. And then from their point of view, they may be thinking they are right. Uh, and sometimes your spiritual master can get angry with you for doing something and say, go to hell, then what? <laughs> <laughs> then what? <laughs> No, what happened? Yeah, he gets angry because you did something terrible. He said, I don't want to see you go to hell. And then next day he'll call you, come here. Next time, don't do this. <laughs> yeah, so he brought you back from hell. <laughs> hell means situation is he though your guru is angry with you. Yeah, it is a hellish feeling. That also happened. One time I was in temple. It happened to you also. <laughs> I paid obeisances from behind. Yeah. I was serving a temple in the office and Maharaj said, you don't pay obeisances to a spiritual master, you're mm. very angry. And then after some time, I left the temple. So he's angry. <laughs> Both times it has happened. Yeah, sometimes it happens. You, the Guru don't see you paying obeisances, yeah. then they want... But it's a, it's a mercy. Because Guru is just saying, because he cares for my spiritual life. Yeah. Then you should immediately pay your business. Sorry, Guru. Yeah, I did that ran off so I didn't want to make more angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so so yeah, so don't don't think you can curse. That's the bottom line. That's not our service. Narada Muni, uh, the four Kumaras, they are all empowered personalities. They are all Avesha avatars. So they curse, it's okay. <laughs> but we are not on that level. Text 35. Tesham itiritam ubhava vadharya ghoram. Tesham itiritam ubhava vadharya ghoram. Tam brahma Sadhyo hare anucharavuru vivyatasta. Sadhyo hare anucharavuru vivyatasta. Pada graha apata rena. Pada When the doorman of Vaikuntha Loka, who was certainly devotees of the Lord, who were certainly devotees of the Lord, so they are devotees of the Lord, found that they were going to be cursed by the Brahmanas, they at once became very much afraid and fell down at the feet of the Brahmanas in great anxiety. For a Brahmana's curse cannot be counteracted by any kind of weapon. Okay, when a Brahmana curse, it will happen because whatever Brahmanas say, the Lord will fulfill that. <laughs> so the purport, Prabhupada says, although by chance the doorman committed a mistake. So by chance, something happened. Uh, committed a mistake by checking the Brahmanas from entering the gate of Vaikuntha. They were at once aware of the gravity of the curse. There are many kinds of offenses, but the greatest offense is to offend a devotee of the Lord. So all of you are devotees of the Lord. So, you shouldn't offend one another. <laughs> yeah, so you seriously have to think. Best is to take a humble position. And if you cannot tolerate it, you go and see your authority. And then tell them, look, I, I, know I cannot tolerate anymore. I want you to help me. <laughs> That's all. Let the authority deal with it. <clears throat> because the doormen were also devotees of the Lord, they were able to understand their mistake. So there is the other thing. If you are a devotee, if you if somebody gets angry with you and tells you you did this wrong, you should understand that you must have done something wrong. Huh? Take, no, you realize, yeah, I have hurt this person. Otherwise, why the person is getting angry? 
So there's two ways people get angry. Either they misunderstand what you say, or that you said something that hurt them. Either case, you hurt them. So that's, then you have to understand, I've hurt this person. Hari. Hari. The door. You leave your home door open. All right, so they were able to understand their mistake and were terrified. See, they were terrified when the four Kumaras were ready because why were they terrified? Still be away from the Lord. Huh? Because what did the Kumaras say? They are not qualified to be in Vaikuntha <laughs> yet, so they were terrified of the curse. They realized the gravity of the situation. Text 36. Bhūyāta gori bhagavad dhirakāri dhando Yo no hare ta surahe na namapi asesham. Yo no hare ta surahe na namapi asesham. Ma bo nutapa kalaya bhagavasmriti gino. Ma bo nutapa kalaya bhagavasmriti gino. Moho bhaved ihatu no rajato radho dha. After being cursed by the sages, the doorman said, It is quite apt that you have punished us for neglecting to respect sages like you. So they accepted the they, no, they accepted the curse as well as their mistakes. But we pray that due to your compassion and our repentance, they also agree they are repenting, the illusion of forgetting the Supreme Personality of Godhead will not come upon us as we go progressively down. Mm. That means they will go down to different life forms, they are, they are saying progressively down. Or they are just going down to the lower species. So Prabhupada writes, to a devotee any heavy punishment is tolerable, but the one which affects forgetfulness of the Supreme Law. So they don't want, they don't mind any punishment. Only that they don't want to forget that they are devotee who, and they want to remember serving Krishna. The doormen who are also devotees, <coughs> someone can help the, uh, open Oh, okay. The doorman who are also devotees could understand the punishment meted out to them for they were conscious of the great offense they had committed by not allowing the sages to enter Vaikuntha Loka. So then, then they realized they made a mistake. Huh? In the lowest species of life, including the animal species, Forgetfulness of the Lord is very prominent. The doormen were aware that they were going to the criminal department of the material world, and they expected that they might go to the lower species and forget the Supreme Lord. So therefore they were saying, as we go progressively downward, that means you may go to a demigod position, and then from there, human or lower species, and lower and lower. So they were very ha un uh, happy. They prayed, therefore, that this might not happen in the lives they were going to accept because of the curse. <laughs> so, which is our position, we are always forgetting. So, but what is the situation for devotional service? We should always and never forget. Smarter we are, Satyakam, Vishnu, Mayakrishna, you are Krishna. You're creating your own yes? <laughs> Don't change the original verses. Just like, you know, Tulsi Arti. Tulsi Arti has become now Krishna Arti. Right? Tulsi Krishna Arti. Right? It says Vishnu Bhakti, Brother yeah. Dev, not Krishna Bhakti. And when that is Deva, Vishnu Bhakti. Vishnu Bhakti. Vishnu Bhakti. Not Krishna Bhakti. I mean, you can say it's okay, but that's not what uh, it was originally. 
But I heard some people sometimes they do something else. Yeah, that's what he's always saying. It's not. Because Prabhu never gets that. Prabhu never gets that. He read the letter to go in the Devi. He writes the Vishnu Bhakti. He never wrote Krishna. I remember reading in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Sarva Bhama Bhattu Charitamrita changed one thing to please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu said, don't do that. Mukti to Bhakti. Yeah, he said, why you do that? It's implied already. <laughs> so we, we, we shouldn't think, I mean, out of enthusiasm, devotional, yeah, I accept, but we should never, never try to change, change things. Yeah. You do slowly in 10 years, you will change something else, something thinking else, yes. we are okay, we can change. Then you change the principles. And, yeah. Anyway, that's. What, what was amazing in this one understanding that they were cursed so bad. Like bad in the sense that the curse is going from Akunta to Madhya. Yeah. I'm not saying that, but the really the point that they're saying, we let us not forget yes. the Supreme Lord. Yeah, they don't mind. Immediately, the first thing. It's not like they're, oh, why, why, why. Immediately, it's like, I don't know. our only concern is we'll forget. That's yeah. very, when we face a bad situation, our thing we want is to about the bad. Yeah, because you know, we are based, our, for us, we're thinking a sense. Yeah. They're they're of good senses, our senses feeling good. Whereas they are thinking of their conscience. Yeah. That service to the Lord. If you think of the Lord, you, you will be doing service. If you're thinking by yourself, you'll be thinking of having a good time, play a peaceful life and things like that. <laughs> right? So that's the difference. As you said, the, yeah. the gatekeepers have a better, higher conscience. That's why they say they don't want to forget. Good yeah. point. Text 37. Evam Tadaiva Bhagavan Ravindha Nabha Evam Tadaiva Bhagavan Ravindha Nabha Swanam Vibhudya Satati Krama Marya Hridya Swanam Vibhudya Satati Marya Hridya Tasmin Yayo Paramahamsa Mahamuni Nas. Anveshani Yacharano Chalayam Sahasri. Anveshani Yacharano Chalayam Sahasri. At that very moment, the Lord who is called Patmanabha because of the lotus grown from his navel, and who is the delight of the righteous, learned about the insult, learned about the insult offered by his own servants to the saints. Accompanied by his spouse, the goddess of fortune, he went to the spot on those very feet, sought for by recluses and great sages. It's interesting because here, uh, in the in the verse. Uh, it says Aravinda Nabaha. Hmm? Bhagavan Aravinda Nabaha. And then in the translation, Prabhupada says, Who is called Patmanabha. So this form appears, his name is Patmanabha. It's a different uh, uh, Narayan form. They have their own names. Okay. So here, the Lord is called Patmanabha. <coughs> So basically, the Lord is running there to what? To save his, his devotee. Yeah. So quickly. <laughs> the spot. No, he, quickly he's coming because he say, "Oh no, they're fighting. There's something bad going." So, he, so basically, even in Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada says, "Right, konteya prajjani hi name pranashya." So that's what he's. Uh, the Lord is always saying. Yeah, because you're not at that level. Once you practice, you, you have to develop that the Lord will protect you. It's one thing to foolishly say Lord will do and then do something foolish. But as you become Krishna conscious more, you'll know certain things uh, in your heart. Uh, you know, you don't do it in a foolish way. And then if something goes wrong, you'll know the Lord will protect you because you didn't do anything wrong. Like you just your he knew the Lord. There's some reason the Lord wants me to go, so I'll go through this. Right? Yeah. Then that story of Gajendra. 
The Lord came running when he called. Yes. The Lord, when he prayed, the Lord came. He called for the Lord, and then the Lord came. Text thirty eight. <laughs> Vyajana Yoshvi Vavayu Lola Kamsashri Yoshvi Patra Sashikesha Rashika Rambum Shubhrata Patra Sashikesha Rambum The sages headed by Shanaka Rishi saw that the Supreme Personality of Godhead Vishnu who was formerly visible only within their hearts in ecstatic trance, had now actually become visible to their eyes. So, yeah. then, first time they ever seen the Lord. Before, it's only in the heart. <laughs> As he came forward, accompanied by his own associates, bearing all paraphernalia, such as an umbrella and a charmer of men, the white bunches of hair moved very gently like two swans, and due to their favorable breeze, the pearls garlanding the umbrella also move, like drops of nectar falling from the white full moon, or ice melting due to a gust of wind. In the purport, in this verse we find the word, Achakshatakshavishayam. The Supreme Lord cannot be seen by ordinary eyes, but he now became visible to the eyesight of the Kumaras. Another significant word is Samadhi Bhagyam. That means fortunate. Eh? Meditators who are very fortunate can see the Vishnu form of the Lord within their hearts by following the yogic process. But to see him face to face is a different matter. This is only possible for pure devotees. Okay. Yeah. Therefore, even those who meditate and see the Paramatma in the heart, unless they want to do service, they cannot have the darshan of the Lord externally. Yeah, not possible. Generally, those who are who meditate in the heart and they want to merge. So even though they see the Paramatma and they want to merge, they go to Brahman Jyoti. They won't go to some plan. Okay. And in the last few lines, Prabhupada writes, when they are mature, the same God is visible before them face to face. For ordinary persons, the Lord is not visible. However, when one is un one can understand the significance of his holy name and one engages himself in the devotional service of the Lord, beginning with the tongue by chanting and tasting prasada, then gradually the Lord reveals himself. Right? What is that verse? Um, seven mukhe seven mukhe he jiva. Swayam Neva Swayam Yes Senses Akka Si Krishna Nama Text 39 Krishna Prasada Sumukham Sprihaniya Dhamma Krishna Prasada Sumukham Sprihaniya Dhamma Sneha Valok Kalaya Hidisam Prishantam Sneha Valok Kalaya Hidisam Prishantam Shame Prithapura Sisho Hitaya Shri Yasma Shame Prithapura Sisho Hitaya Shri Yasma 
चूडामनिम सुभग यंतमिवात्म धिष्णम The Lord is the reservoir of all pleasure. His auspicious presence is meant for everyone's benediction, and His affectionate smiling and glancing touch the core of the heart. The Lord's beautiful bodily color is blackish, and His broad chest is the resting place of the goddess of fortune, who glorifies the entire spiritual world, the summit of all heavenly planets. Thus it appeared that the Lord was personally spreading the beauty and good fortune of the spiritual world. <laughs> It's just an amazing sight, huh? basically. In the purport, Prophet says, "When the Lord came, He was pleased with everyone. Therefore, it is stated here, Krishna Prashada Sumukham. The Lord knew that even the offensive dormant were His pure devotees." Although by chance they committed an offence at the feet of other animals, other devotees, basically offending a, a devotee is dangerous. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says it is an offence to a devotee. It's just like a mad elephant run loose in a garden. Okay, we, we should be very careful because. The Lord sees everyone equally, even though you are big devotee, small devotee. The Lord sees everyone equally, so we have to be very careful how we treat one another. So here, particularly, the Lord, uh, Prabhupada says, the Lord, being equal to all and being especially inclined to his devotee, looked as mercifully at the offenders as at the offended. <laughs> So he sees both of them equal. Oh, you were offended. I'm so sorry. Oh, you were offensive. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> like that. <laughs> And then in the last paragraph, <coughs> Prabhupada writes, "The Lord is the reservoir of all pleasure, because He has all the transcendental qualities." And that's why the word "spri haniya dharma." Yes, has been used. The Lord gives shelter to the impersonalist in his impersonal Brahman apple, whereas he gives shelter to the devotees in his personal abodes, known as the Vaikuntha Lokas. And he is especially inclined to his devotees, even though he is equal to all samaha sarva bhuteshu. He is particularly inclined to the devotees because, just like in the family. If you have few children, all the children you love, so you are equal to them. But if one child particularly takes care of you and makes sure that you are taken care, naturally you will have more affection for that child. So that's the position of devotees. They they were they care about the Lord more than the other living entities. <laughs> you were going to ask? Uh, yes, the Lord's beautiful body color is blackish. Hmm. Is that the same with in the Vaikuntha planets? The Lord's color is blackish. He is always blackish, blue, blue or blackish. Always blue or blackish. Yeah, always. Blue or blackish, yeah, always. Blue. Blue. Blue or blackish is it's the same. That means or darkish sometimes is. Because why? So I am very aware, but when but like Lord Rama and Lord Lord Krishna is considered black, but is Lord Rama also? Yes. Find of the same some, color, or no? I've read in, in the Valmiki he writes him his description as uh, darkish. Oh, he does. Yeah, I've I've read the translation. I don't know how good it is. And then some pastimes he's greenish. Yeah. Yeah. So according to your desire, I think he will appear that way. <laughs> some people like to see him as green as the the green parrot, like that that kind. So he appears like that also, or fresh grass. That's yeah. generally yeah, fresh grass. Something I heard. Once. So then uh, Balaram is always white in color. So he will be white when you see. Yeah. <laughs> But in general, all the Vaikuntha Nath, as far as I know, they are darkish in color. Uh, it's possible they can show other colors also. It's not that they cannot. They can, <laughs> but yeah. From here, you know he is darkish. 
वलगु प्रकोष्ठ वलय विनता सुता विनस्तहस्तमितरेण धुना he was adorned with a girdle that shone brightly on the yellow cloth covering his large hips and he wore a garland of fresh flowers which was distinguished by humming bees his lovely wrists were graced with bracelets and he rested one of his hands on the shoulder of Garuda, his carrier, and twirled the lotus with another hand. So you can see the description. So how he is wearing his jewelry. So when you dress the deities, you can take guidance from the readings in the scripture also. So when you when you put jewelry in some place in the hand, he can have lotus things like that. That's how you understand. From scripture, not speculate anyhow. Yeah. Prabhupada writes here is a full description of the personality of Godhead as personally experienced by the sages. The Lord's personal body was covered with yellow robes and his waist was thin. In Vaikuntha, whenever there is a flower garland on the chest of the personality of Godhead or any one of his associates, it is described that the humming bees are there. So always there are humming bees. Even his associates have humming bees. All these features are very beautiful and attractive for the devotees. One of the Lord's hands rested on his carrier, Garuda, and in another hand he twirled a lotus flower. These are personal characteristics of the personality of Godhead Narayan. Text 41. What's, what's the meaning of girdle? Girdle means he wears like a waist. ओहोदयुषिपन्मकुंडलमंदनाशमुखमणिमत्कीटम his countenance was distinguished by cheeks that enhanced the beauty of his alligator shaped pendants. I guess they are his earrings, which outshone lightning. His nose was prominent, and his head was covered with a gem-studded crown. A charming necklace hung between his stout arms, and his neck was adorned with a gem known by the name Kastu. So, he has alligator, and uh, Krishna has... Shark. <laughs> That's what I've read. But it's in the interchangeable. They can both wear. Okay. Text 42. Atro pra atro prastam miti jos mitam indriya. Atro prastam miti jos mitam indriya. Swanam jiya virachitam bahu sausta vadhyam. Swanam jiya virachitam bahu sausta vadhyam. Mayam bhavasya bhavatam cha bhajanta mangam. Mayam bhavasya bhavatam cha bhajanta mangam. Nemur nirikshana vitri patadesu murake. Nemur nirikshana vitri patadesu murake. 
the exquisite beauty of Narayana, being many times magnified by the intelligence of his devotees, was so attractive that it defeated the pride of the goddess of fortune in being the most beautiful. My dear demigods, the Lord who thus manifested himself is worshipable by me, by Lord Shiva, and by all of you. The sages regarded him with unsated eyes and joyously bowed their heads at his lotus feet. So here we're coming back, but the Brahma is speaking. Yeah. <coughs> Purport. A couple of lines down, Prabhupada writes, In the words of Vaishnava poets, it is said, that the Lord's beauty is so enchanting that it defeats hundreds of thousands of cupids. He is therefore called Madana Mohana. It is also described that the Lord sometimes becomes mad after the beauty of Radha Rani, for it is described that under those circumstances. Although Lord Krishna is Madana Mohana, he becomes Madana Daha, or enchanted by the beauty of Radha Rani. So sometimes it's also known as Madhana Mohi, Mohana Mohini. Right? Actually, the Lord's beauty is super excellent. <laughs> Surpassing even the beauty of Lakshmi in Vaikuntha. The devotees of the Lord in Vaikuntha planets want to see the Lord as the most beautiful. But the devotees in Gokula or Krishna Loka want to see Radha Rani as more beautiful than Krishna. <laughs> so there's a difference. <laughs> The adjustment is that the Lord, being Bhakta Vatsala, or one who wants to please his devotees, assumes such features so that the devotees like Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and other demigods may be pleased. So according to the desired devotees, he, he either is more beautiful than Lakshmi or less than Radharani, something like that. <laughs> Bhakta Vatsala, because he wants to please the devotee. Here also for the devotees sages, the Kumaras, the Lord appeared in his most beautiful feature and they continued to see him without satiation and wanted to continue seeing him more and more. So they were aroused, their natural love for the Lord is aroused. So they cannot be satisfied. The sages, even though they saw him, they were not satisfied. Even though they were liberated, now they are finding that they are attracted to something. <laughs> they were so amazed by themselves. Right? The verse which explains that even Atmaramas are, even though they are self-satisfied, once they see the Supreme Man, that's it. They want to do service for him and everything. Yeah. So two questions here. One is in the translation, it says, the exclusive beauty of Narayan being many times magnified by the intelligence of his devotees. What that's why Prabhupada explained, according to the way the devotees want to see him. Oh, okay. That's yeah. what yeah. he So, Lord manif magnifies yes. his beauty. Yes. Yeah. Depending it's upon what the devotees It's a reciprocation. Wants. They think, oh Lord, you are more beautiful. You know? and then he so he becomes more beautiful. beautiful. And then someone else say, you know, it's a, like a competition. Yeah. Like <laughs> so, another question is, yeah, why the devotees in Vrindavan they want Radharani to be that is the, that's how it is yeah. it's a rasa thing yeah. they want Radharani to say everything because Radharani is the best devotee who pleases Krishna Yeah. Right. no one else can please Krishna like yeah. so everybody wants to support her <laughs> yeah. so therefore they root for her oh yeah you are the one <laughs> so they want her to be the most Beautiful, everything for her. That's the mood. And Prabhupada is revealing something that is going on <laughs> internally. <laughs> it's far out. It's a compliment. Yeah, this is far out. No, to the extent that they want her to be greater than Krishna, that's a, it's a, that's a bridge. Yeah, and Krishna thinks like that also. What? How is it that she can uh, enjoy me better than I can? <laughs> then he takes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood. Text 43. Tasya Ravinda Nayanasya Padara Vinda. Tasya Ravinda Nayanasya Padara Vinda. Kinjal Kamishra Tulasi Makaranda Vayu. Kinjal Kamishra Tulasi Makaranda Vayu. 
अंतर्गत स्वीर्विवरेण चकार संशोभमक्षर जु संशोभमक्षर जुषाम When the breeze carrying the aroma of Tulasi leaves from the toes of the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead entered the nostrils of those sages, they experienced a change both both in body and in mind. Even though they were attached to the impersonal Brahman understanding, so now their whole, uh, even though they pure devotees on the Brahman level, they are they becoming more higher than that. They can find that this is more. We we are more attracted to the personality rather than the <laughs> impersonal. So it appears from this verse that the four Kumaras were impersonalists or protagonists. Of the philosophy of monism, becoming one with the Lord, but as soon as they saw the Lord's features, their minds changed. In other words, the impersonalist who feels transcendental pleasure in striving to become one with the Lord is defeated when he sees the beautiful transcendental features of the Lord. Totally different. So this is a proof. Any impersonalist make any things, you quote this verse because of the fragrance of his lotus feet. Carried by the air and mixed with the aroma of tulasi, their minds changed. Instead of becoming one with the supreme law, they thought it wise to be devotees. <laughs> becoming a servitor of the lotus feet of the Lord is better than becoming one with the Lord. So here you, you get the answer what you wanted to know, and also why uh, impersonalism is not considered to be higher. Okay, this proves. So. So when when the the when we Prabhupada is talking, referring here philosophy of monism, yeah. So can we distinguish between Brahmavadi and because becoming one with the Lord, my understanding is is Mayavad, not Brahmavad. Is that true? Here, in the sense that transcendentally they want to, you know, not in the sense that they want to, huh? Yeah, merging with Brahmavad, losing their identity. They don't want to lose their identity. The other guys are not thinking that, right? They are thinking they are a lot. Yeah. yeah. So that's a difference. They are offensive. This is not offensive. They <laughs> are looking for Sarijya before. Yeah. Now they don't want Sarijya. Mm-hmm. They don't want Sarijya, that's right. They want something else. They want to serve. Did you check? He said he will call you. He'll call you, huh? Check again anyway. <laughs> Text forty four. Teva amusya vadana sita padma koshan. Teva amusya vadana sita padma koshan. Udviksha sundara taradhara kunda hasan. Udviksha sundara taradhara kunda hasan. Labdha shisha punara veksha tadiya mangri. Labdha shisha punara veksha tadiya mangri. Dvandvam na karuna mani sayanam nipadhu. The Lord's beautiful face appeared to them like the inside of a blue lotus. So he is bluish in color. And the Lord's smile appeared to be a blossoming jasmine flower. <coughs> oh, okay. Well, that's what he told him uh, like half an hour ago. No, he said it's coming. He asked us to come. Who? Mama. Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> because he, half an hour ago he told him the same thing. <laughs> About to be. <laughs> I'll finish the chapter then. Appear to be blossoming. Okay, blossoming jasmine. Jasmine flower is what color? White. 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 So when he smiled, what can be seen? The <laughs> tea. Yeah. After seeing the face of the Lord, the sages were fully satisfied, and when they wanted to see him further, they looked upon the nails of his lotus feet, which resemble rubies. A reddish in color. <laughs> 
that's so you can see you know the when you even paint the they this this must match probably <laughs> Thus, they viewed the Lord's transcendental body again and again, and so they finally achieved meditation on the Lord's personal feature. Samadhi, na? Sharana. Hmm? So it's just they fully satisfied. Yeah. Transcendentally satisfied, complete. See, when you are a Brahman uh, thing, you are not called Phoenix. It's not perfection. Perfection is at the Vaikuntha or Gologalaya, that's perfection. Yes. So in that case, Bhagavan yes. fully satisfied. Fully satisfied at Bhagavan. Text 45. Um Sam Gatim Nidayatami Hayoga Marge. Um Sam Gatim Nidayatami Hayoga Marge. Dhyana Sat. Jnana Svadam Bahumatam Nayana Bhiramam Jnana Svadam Bahumatam Nayana Bhiramam Om Snam Vapur Darshayana Mananya Siddhe Om Snam Vapur Aatpatti kai samagranan yuta mashta bhogai Aatpatti kai samagranan This is the form of the Lord which is meditated upon by the followers of the yoga process and it is pleasing to the yogis in meditation. It is not imaginary but factual as proved by great yogis. The Lord is full in eight kinds of achievement. But for others, these achievements are not possible in true perfection. <coughs> in the book, what Prabhupada says, the success of the yoga process is very nicely described here. It is specifically mentioned that the form of the Lord as 400 Narayana is the object of meditation for the followers of yoga man. Okay. So those who do yoga, they are supposed to meditate on this form, 400 now. But nowadays all the yoga classes, they are not meditating. Huh? What they meditate on? How good their body look and so on, right? How much weight they get. Their own form. Huh? Their own, own form. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Oh, 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 nowadays people don't know about Narayana. They meditate on generally impersonal. Most of them. Most of them, right? Most of the established yoga society, they all want to meditate on nothing. As you can see, it's not approved by the great yogis who follow the standard met method. This is not the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this Narayan form is Krishna's expansion. And Prabhupada says, Therefore, the Krishna Consciousness Movement, which is now spreading, is the real topmost process of yoga practice. Yeah. 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 Yogi Nama Bhis. Krishna Consciousness is the highest yoga performance by trained devotional yogis. So all of us have been trained and we are all yogis. Despite all the allurement of yoga practice, the eight kinds of yogic perfections are hardly achievable by the common man. It's true. Who you know have this potency? Hardly. Common man cannot. Yeah, they go one hour yoga studio and then they go back and then they break all the principles. Mm -hmm. What can they achieve? They achieve some body exhaustion so they can sleep a little bit. That's it. And they feel uh, feeling so healthy. <laughs> That's about all. So Prabhupada says the highest yoga mark process is to concentrate the mind 24 hours a day on Krishna. 24 hours. Not just one hour, two hours. Even we chant also we don't focus. <laughs> like Dhruva like Maharaj. Like Ambarish Maharaj. This is called Krishna Consciousness. So then Prabhupada also says, real yoga practice is to control the senses and after such control is established to concentrate the mind of the Narayana form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. He is the original Narayana. 
Then later on, in the paragraph 5,000 years ago, Prabhupada writes, right? When Arjuna and Krishna spoke in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, Prabhupada says, real yoga is to search out the four-handed super soul within one's heart and see him perpetually in meditation. It re-emphasizes the point again. Okay. Yoga means to do that, to see the super soul in the heart. It's not something we, we are creating. Then Prabhupada says in the next paragraph, by meditation one can understand that God is seated within one's heart. He's not just seated in our heart, he's seated in uh, all the living entities. And not only that, he's also in the uh, all the whole universe. He has to be there, otherwise it cannot function. <laughs> the Lord is not there, it doesn't it is inanimate. Yeah. It's inert. Matter is inert unless the Lord is in there. Then it becomes active, become Mahata. <laughs> All right. So in the second or third last paragraph, in the middle, where it starts for the perfect yogi, that eight kinds of super achievement, right? So in that middle paragraph, Prabhupada writes, this age of Kali is called the fallen age. In this age, people in general are short living and very slow to understand self-realization or spiritual life. They are mostly unfortunate. And therefore, if someone is a little bit interested in self-realization, he's likely to be misguided by so many frauds. So many frauds. It's like the third paragraph from the bottom. The only way to realize the perfect stage of yoga is to follow the principles of Bhagavad Gita as practiced by Lord Chaitanya. This is the simplest and highest perfection of yoga practice. Lord Chaitanya demonstrated this Krishna consciousness yoga system in a practical manner simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna. As prescribed in the Vedanta, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and many important Puranas. So basically in Kali Yuga you cannot really do Ashtanga Yoga. And you can, you can do something. It will, it will, Effectively, you will only do it like making some exercises. And for some people, it helps control some mind at least. And once you've done that, you should do chanting. Chanting must be done. That is the real yoga for this age, for this Kali Yuga. Sankirtan Yagna is the real yoga for us. So that is what Prabhupada is emphasizing. And finally, in the the next paragraph after that, Prabhupada says, it is very easy and practical for this age, especially for those who are serious about success in yoga. No other process of yoga can be successful in this age. The meditation process was possible in the golden age, Satya Yuga, because people in that age used to live for hundreds of thousands of years. If one one's success in practical yoga practice it is advised that he take to the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 And he will actually feel himself making progress. So, he will actually feel himself making progress. Yeah. Raja Vidya, Raja Vidya, Pavitram Vidya, Pratikshivagamam, Tanyam Susukam Kartum. It is experience essential. That means you will experience. If you are sincere, you know, yes, I am developing this. If you are not sincere and you are covered, then you think you are great anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so you won't do it. So Prabhupada says he will actually feel himself making work. That means you won't have attachment to material things. You become more and more attracted to Krishna or anything to do with Krishna topics. Just like you can stay at home and watch uh, football or whatever. But you came here when you means you have some attraction to Krishna. 
either that or you just want to make sure others don't think <laughs> social <laughs> reasons <laughs> so that is the main text 46 kumara uchuhu yo sho yo antrahito hridi gato pi duratmana duratmanam kham yo so dvai vano yanayana moolam ananta radha so dvai vano yanayana moolam ananta radha yahi eva karna vivarena guham gato na yahi pitranu varnitaraha bhavadu bhavena so the kumaras now have been seen the lord and having transformation in their heart they are now glorifying the lord the kumara said oh dear lord you are not manifested to rascals even though you are seated within the heart of everyone but as far as we are concerned we see you face to face although you are unlimited the statements we have heard about you from our father brahma through the years have now been actually realized by your kind appearance so this can only happen in disciplic succession you cannot uh, think that uh, you on your own you can do no it has to be disciplic you have to take up the process seriously and then take shelter of a guru and then it will be revealed eventually in the papa papa says the so called yogis who concentrate their mind or meditate upon the impersonal or void are described here they are rascals that's what it is then couple of lines down prabha say those so called yogis who although engage in meditation are not broad hearted cannot find the four handed narayana form even though he seated within their heart although the first realization of the supreme absolute truth is impersonal brahman one should not remain satisfied with experiencing the impersonal effulgence of the supreme lord in the ishobanishad also the devotee prays that the glaring effulgence of brahman may be removed from his eyes so that he can see the real personal feature of the lord and thus satisfy him fully remember ishobanishad when you the please remove that glaring of it <coughs> because he wants to serve similarly although the lord is not visible in the beginning because of his glaring bodily effulgence If a devotee sincerely wants to see him, the Lord is revealed to him. So you have to become sincere. And then the next paragraph, Prabhupada says, Although they had heard from their father, Brahma, about the personal feature of the Lord, only the impersonal feature, Brahman, was revealed to them. But because they were sincerely searching for the Lord, they finally saw his personal feature directly. which corresponded with the description given by their father they thus became fully satisfied here they expressed their gratitude because although they were foolish in personalness in the beginning by the grace of the lord they could now have the good fortune to see his personal feature so basically they they are they are thanking their father brahma for revealing it to them because this is the disciplic succession Okay. So Prabhupada says the Kumaras were sons of Brahma. They had the opportunity to learn Vedic knowledge from the disciplic succession of Brahma. Yeah. So only the impersonal feature Brahma was revealed to them because they were sincerely searching for the Lord. So because they heard from Brahma who the Lord was, so they were looking for the Lord also. So that's why they came to Vaikuntha. So they were not satisfied just with the impersonal Brahman, but they were still looking. No, they they felt they they had achieved already. <laughs> but because they heard from Brahma about Narayana, they came to see who. Let's have a look at <laughs> Narayana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's like that. <laughs> They're traveling everywhere, so they go. Oh, let's go to Vaikuntha. Let's look at Narayana. See how he is. Qualified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are qualified. That's why we go everywhere. Oh, basically, they go on. The, they don't. X forty seven. 
तम स्वाम विदाम भगवान परमात्म तत्व सत्न संप्रतिरति रचय ताप विदतेनालिटी who manifests his transcendental form in the uncontaminated mode of pure goodness this transcendental eternal form of your personality can be understood only by your mercy through unflinching devotional service by great sages whose hearts have been purified in the devotional way hmm. so it's a, it's not going to be easy <laughs> we need to work hard So in the, towards the end of the paragraph, Prabhupada writes, it is said that one can understand the supreme personality of Godhead when one is even slightly favored by Him. Otherwise, without His mercy, a man may speculate for thousands of years and not understand what is actually the absolute truth. So one can be Bhagunam Janmanam Ante. So for many many lives. Until finally one day, ante. This mercy can be perceived by the devotee when he is completely free from contamination. It is stated, therefore, that only when all contamination is rooted out and the devotee is completely detached from the material attractions can he receive this mercy of the Lord. So a lot of effort from our part is required to purify our. Activities, our hearts, cheto dharmana marjana. That purification must be there. Chanting nicely, doing service nicely, not fighting with one another, devotees. Like it's not all this is important. Then, then your desire to serve Krishna is pure and is real. You really want to do it. Then the Lord will reveal slowly. Okay, some bhajatam. What is that? Rajatam Riti Puru, Dada Ani Puti Yo. So that is important. Huh? Let's see. Uh, there is um, okay. There is only three more verses. <coughs> Text fourteen eight. Huh? No, we did that. Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Huh? Yeah. Okay. भय ध्रुव उन्नयस्ते ये अंगिर शरण शरणाभवता कथाया कीर्तन्यतीर्थयशसहकुशलारसारसज्ञातीर्थयशसारसज्ञा in understanding things as they are engaged in hearing narrations of the auspicious activities and pastimes of the lord which are worth chanting and worth hearing such persons do not care even for the highest material benediction namely liberation to say nothing of other less important benedictions like the material happiness of the heavenly kingdom In the middle of the paragraph, Prabhupada says, "Pure devotion service is shavanam kirtan. Pure devotees who take transcendental pleasure in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord do not care for any kind of liberation. That means the five liberations: four Vaikuntha and one Saduji. 
even if they offer the five liberations, they refuse to accept them as stated in the Bhagavatam in the third canto. Couple of lines down, Prabhupada says the devotee is never interested in such temporary pleasure. Uh, I mean, post of Indra, Chandra, all those he is not interested. From Vedic scriptures, it is understood that sometimes even Brahma and Indra fall down. But a devotee in the transcendental board of the Lord never falls. So when when you are in when you go back to Godhead, you don't fall down. Okay. This transcendental stage of life in which one feels transcendental pleasure in hearing the Lord's pastime is also recommended by Lord Chaitanya. When Lord Chaitanya was talking with Ramananda Rai, there were varieties of suggestions offered by Ramananda regarding spiritual realization. But Lord Chaitanya rejected all but one. That one should hear that one should hear the glories of the Lord in association with pure devotees. That is acceptable for everyone, especially in this age. One should engage himself in hearing from pure devotees about the activities of the Lord. That is considered the supreme benediction for mankind. So for us, we hear from devotees, like we are gathering, we are listening and exchanging ideas. We hear from Prabhupada, we read Prabhupada's book, we listen to Prabhupada's classes, then we listen to devotees' tapes, gurus' tapes, like that. Text 49. Kamam bhavasva vrijjine nirayeshu nasta Kamam Cheto libadya dinute padayo rameta Cheto libadya dinute padayo rameta Vachashya nastu lasiva Puryetate Gunagane Yadi Karna Randraha O Lord, <coughs> O Lord, we pray that you let us be born in, an, in any hellish condition of life. So the sages are praying. Just as long as our hearts and minds are always engaged in the service of your lotus feet. Our words are made beautiful by speaking of your activities, just as Tulasi leaves are beautified when offered onto your lotus feet. And as long as our ears are always filled with the chanting of your transcendental qualities. <laughs> and the Prabhupada Prabhupada says the four sages now offer their humility to the personality of Godhead because of their having been haughty in cursing two other devotees of the Lord. So they feel bad now. Jaya and Vijaya, the two doorkeepers who checked them from entering the Vaikuntha planet, were certainly offended. But as Vaishnavas, the four sages should not have cursed them in anger. After the incident, they became conscious that they had done wrong by cursing the devotees of the Lord. And they prayed to the Lord that even in the hellish condition of life, their minds might not be distracted from the engagement of service to the Lotus Spirit of Lord Narayana. Those who are devotees of the Lord are not afraid of any condition of life, provided there is constant engagement in the service of the Lord. So as devotees, as long as you have service to the deities or the devotees, you shouldn't feel disturbed. You shouldn't. <laughs> But because we are so materially attached to things, we feel disturbed all the time. Remember, early on, Vaikuntha means we are always serving. Or thinking of the Lord's pleasure. But because we are not in that mood, we are always in misery. So we are not in Vaikuntha. Uh -huh. We are in Kunta itself. <laughs> so for the Lord, those who do the service, he doesn't see eh, any distinction wherever they are, wherever they do service, whether in hell or ha heaven. For him, he doesn't see. 
But materialists, we see like that. Oh, I have to be in heaven, then I can do nicely. Right? I have to be living in this place, that place. Like that. Then I am peaceful. I have to have a five room uh, apartment or a bungalow, then I will be peaceful, then I can change for like that. <laughs> or I must drive a, 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 what? a Mercedes or a, a Lotus Esprit or something, right? Those kind of cars, then only I'll be peaceful. We don't need all that. So the Lord, because He doesn't see what you're saying, that kind of situation. He only sees how your heart is wanting to serve. So that's how you see. And finally, again, Prabhupada re emphasizes at the end of the uh, last paragraph a devotee is not afraid of going to hell if he has the opportunity to hear the glories of the Lord constantly. This is the advantage of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. One may be put in any condition, but God gives him the prerogative to chant Hare Krishna. So that's a fact. No matter what our situation is, we can still chant in whatever situation. If one goes on chanting, in any condition of life, if one goes on chanting, he will never be unhappy. So even if you feel unhappy, you should chant. <laughs> Not like, oh, everything is hell, hell with the chanting. <laughs> no. Continue chanting and your life will be peaceful. Eventually you will be peaceful. The Lord will rectify something. It takes time. Because material world, things have to be rectified before you feel peace. So it will take some time, but you have to still chant. Okay? One time Haridasa was saying that you define your minimum that mm. is required for you to be happy. So what's your minimum? Yeah. yeah. Keep, reducing. keep reducing your minimum. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> then keep reducing. Or you can say you can define what I can do now and then keep increasing every year. Yeah. Because when you are born, it's zero service to Krishna, that much to material body. Right? Then as you get older and older, the requirements, material requirements must go down and the spiritual requirements must come. So it has to go this way. Yeah. <laughs> so we, 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 we want to go this way. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah. So since they are praying that you let us be born in any fixed condition of the life, is that they are they are like afraid that God is going to curse them because they have done they have cursed the No, they are feeling bad. They're feeling that they shouldn't have cursed. So they're saying, okay, you punish us also for doing this mistake. Text 50. Last verse. Pradusha kartha yadidam puruhuta rupam. Pradusha kartha yadidam puruhuta rupam. Tenesha nimvritam avapura langdra shonaha. Tasma idam bhagavate nama it vidhema. Tasma idam bhagavate nama it vidhema. Yo natma nam durudayo bhagavan pratitaha. Yo natma nam durudayo bhagavan pratitaha. O Lord, we therefore offer our respectful obeisances on the eternal form as the personality of God which you have so kindly manifested before us. Your supreme eternal form cannot be seen by unfortunate, less intelligent persons. But we are so much satisfied in our mind and vision to see. Basically, they are saying how fortunate they became because they were unfortunate previously. Why? Yeah. Papa explains, the four sages were impersonalists in the beginning of their spiritual life. But afterwards, by the grace of their father and spiritual master, Brahma, they understood the eternal spiritual form of the Lord and felt completely satisfied. So they heard so much about Narayan from Brahma, but they never were attracted yet. But they heard. Kindly, they asked questions. So many times you see them ask questions. So then now, after hearing all that, when they saw the Lord, everything came into total uh, spiritual experience. It made sense. 
everything made sense what Brahma told them. And so therefore, they, they completely felt uh, spiritualized and satisfied. In other words, the transcendentalists who aspire to the impersonal Brahman or localized Paramatma are not fully satisfied and still hanker for more. Which means Brahman realization is incomplete. It is not perfect. Not perfection yet. Okay? Even if they are satisfied in their mind still, transcendentally the eyes are not satisfied. But as soon as such persons come to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they are satisfied in all respects. <clears throat> now, in, towards the middle of the purport, Prabhupada writes, For the impersonalists and the so-called yogis, the Lord is always hidden with the curtain of yoga mind. Bhagavad Gita says that even when the Lord Krishna, when Lord Krishna was seen by everyone while he was present on the surface of the earth, the impersonalists and the so-called yogis could not see him because they were devoid of devotional eyes. So bhakti amama vijananti. Uh, only through bhakti you can get Krishna. So everything is, the, this particular chapter shows two things, right? One is you cannot be offensive to devotees, regardless of their status, high or low. The other thing is only bhakti is important. And through bhakti one can actually get the vision of the Lord. If you just don't worry about the pastime and all, you'll see that is what it is. Don't offend and don't uh, and don't take up impersonally because there's something higher than that. And they feeling so the sages felt so bad and and then they felt so much obliged to the Lord. They kept paying obeisance to him again. All right, so we'll stop here. We'll go to the temple. They said there's a. Pushpanjali or something. Yeah.